Thank you. Uh, thanks. Is it on? Yes. Okay. Okay, my name is Peter van Dijk. I work for PowerDNS. Uh, Job requested I did this talk in English because we do have some foreign visitors. Um, this talk is not about DNSSEC. It's also not about PowerDNS. I will cover some aspects of privacy and security from the aspect of your end user. Um, first, I have a question. Who here uses DNS? <laughs> Who uses PowerDNS? Who uses PowerDNS 2.9? Stop it. It is, <laughs> it is the Windows XP of name servers. <laughs> Please upgrade. All right, um, first some background. This will probably be boring to most of you. Um, you have a client. Your average client is a smartphone, a laptop, uh, a set-top box, whatever. It talks to a recursor. In this example, the one Google runs for you. Um, you send a question, you want the IP address for google.com, you get an answer back. That's plain and simple. What happens on the background is a bit more complicated. This recursor gets your question, it needs to find an answer. It doesn't know where Google is, it has no idea. It only knows where the roots are. So it sends the roots, your full question. Gets an answer back, root says, I don't know, ask.com, it might know. Same thing happens there, etc. Eventually you get to the Google name servers. They give you the answer. So, in this whole story, who has seen your queries? Any thoughts? Everyone. Well, yes, that, that's accurate. Your ISP has seen them because they operate the recursor, because the question travels over their wires. Um, the root has seen your query, the .com service has seen your query, Google obviously has seen your query. That's okay, you wanted to visit google.com. Um, your ISP knows your IP. They can see you are going to google.com. Google and the .com servers have not seen your IP, so that's okay. They don't know where you're going. But this is changing. Um, you have um, several public open resolver services now, like Google's and OpenDNS and a few others. Um, these interact badly with content delivery networks. So what's happening now? is that if you send a question to such an open resolver and that question gets passed on to a content delivery network, your subnet information is passed along. So right now, right now many authoritative name servers will see your client IP or the first 24 bits of it or 64 in V6, I guess. Um, so this is the thing that's changing. Before, you only had um, the authoritatives, your ISP, people sniffing, knowing where you were going, but the authorities did not know your client IP. And now, oh, I have a picture for it. The root gets the same question again, .com gets the same question. But then, when the recursor sends your question to the authorities, your subnet gets passed along. This is, this is uh, what I meant. So, within DNS, which is plain text, more and more information is being passed on um, beyond your recursor, beyond your ISP. Um, there are a couple of proposals coming up now to change that. Um, so, um, if you look at this picture, do you think that at any point there is too much information going over the wire? Could we do better? Any thoughts? No? Okay. So, um, one proposal is going around now, it's called QName Minimization. Uh, it's being spearheaded by Stefan Bordsmeier uh, from AFNIC, the .fr TLD registry. Um, the idea is that if you have this picture again, previously the, previously the recursor would send the full question to the root. And the root would just go, no, I don't know, ask.com. But if you just ask for com and s, you can also get that information. So this is a tiny bit of privacy that um, Stefan and the people behind this draft are hoping to get to, to, to move forward with. Um, the, the, they have been testing this in practice. Um, at first, it worked everywhere on the internet except with Akamai. <laughs> and um, I should tell you, as a rule, in any DNS resolver implementation, about 30% of the code is for dealing with Akamai. 
because they, they write their own name servers and they don't care. Um, but um, in this specific case, I understand Akamai has made changes that now make this possible. So I hope we might see some of this in the future. Um, the biggest problem, of course, with DNS traffic is it's unencrypted. Uh, so there has been a working group set up. Um, this is the abstract of their problem statement. It is intended to be an analysis of the present situation and does not prescribe solutions. Uh, as it turns out, the working group has so far not yielded solutions either. Their basic idea is add TLS, add TCP, and everything will be all right. But right now, DNS is a very simple protocol. You have your UDP packets, they come in, you read the query, you send an answer out. It takes very little resources. And the proposals coming from this, wor this, this working group right now, they are expensive. They will in increase your resolver farm sizes tenfold. And even worse for the authoritatives that may have to deal with 100,000 TCP connections per second, or alternatively, 500,000 persistent TCP connections all the time. Um, nobody wants either of these things, certainly not us, the developers. Um, there is uh, one other set of proposals uh, that, had basi that had, has basically gone and died, mostly. Uh, DNS curve is Dan Bernstein's DNSSEC alternative. Um, uh, while DNSSEC only signs messages, provides no privacy, uh, the NS curve encrypts the whole message, a bit TLS-like, but much cheaper. Um, the NS curve is gone, it's, it's not that happening. However, uh, people from OpenDNS have picked up the DNS curve specification and turned it into a protocol for traffic between clients and recursors. So if you are an OpenDNS user today, you can download their client and have encrypted traffic between you and them which will give you quite a lot of privacy already. Um, that's the privacy part of my talk. Um, next up is the other thing that end users should care about, which is spoofing. Um, I've given talks in the past about DDoS and amplification, etc. We're not covering that, this is for end users. So um, this picture should look familiar by now. You have a recursor finding something on behalf of a client. It sends a question to the authoritative, and before it can respond, an attacker pops up from somewhere on the wire, off the wire, whatever, and it uh, sends a bogus answer. This IP, of course, is the IP of Bing.com. Um, a few milliseconds later, the authoritative re responds with the correct data, but the recursor has already accepted the data from the attacker. Um, this has been a problem with DNS from the beginning. DNS has minor protection against this inside the protocol. There's a 16-bit token in every query, and an answer has to copy that token. Um, so if you want to spoof an answer, you need to predict that token, or you need to figure out how to get multiple shots at this. Until 10 years ago, we did not know how to get multiple shots. Uh, then uh, Dan Kaminsky came along. Um, this is a, a well-publicized issue that he, that he found. He found a trick to get 10,000, 20,000 shots a minute at guessing the idea. And for 16-bit space, 64K options, you could accomplish a spoof in seconds or minutes if you got unlucky. Um, right, the, we have the random ID. Um, so from that point on, some name server, server software already was not vulnerable to this issue. Um, but Dan Kaminsky really promoted DNSSEC for one. Well, that's going somewhere now. But the other thing he promoted was, please, on top of the 16-bit ID, use random port numbers, etc., cetera, um, which gives you an, an another, another 14 bits, I guess. You can't use the full range. Um, and uh, my coworker, Bert Hubert, uh, he wrote up a nice document about this. If you want to know some background um, on how we prevent spoofing today in PowerDNS and in other servers, this might be interesting reading. It's uh, RFC 5452. Uh, right around the same time, uh, Paul Vixie had a clever idea. He said, well, we have the 16-bit query ID. We have 
the, the port number, which yields us another 14, but DNS is not case sensitive. Why don't we randomize the case in the, in the question? So you have www.uppercaseg, lowercaseoogle.com, whatever. And that way, for every letter in, in a query, you get a, another bit of security. Um, I suspect this was meant as a joke, but um, Unbound implemented it. And to this day, we get customers asking, what's wrong with these questions we're getting? Why are they uppercase and lowercase? Um, also turns out that uh, we keep finding bugs in our own and in other people's software where these mixed case queries do not get retrieved from the cache correctly, which is bad for performance. Um, so th this is a, j a joke gone, uh, gone real and now we're stuck with it. <laughs> thanks, Fixie. Sorry? Thanks, Fixie. Yeah, thanks, Fixie, for many, many things. <laughs> he, no, he did a lot of good stuff too. Okay. Yeah. Um, so another proposal that, that's been uh, around for, uh, for a long time in many forms. Um, it's been called Cookies for 15 years. There was a variant called EDNS Ping for a while that's, that uh, Bert, uh, my coworker, uh, documented and implemented. The idea here is that you add an additional section to your question, to your query packet, that the server has to echo back to you. And that way you can add 100, 200, 500 extra bits of security. Um, and additionally, this would allow a server to know that a client is legit because if a client has asked a server a question, it gets the server cookie. Then the next question from the client can pass on the cookie. Server knows the question is legit and it can base its DDoS defense mechanisms on this extra information. Um, and then, of course, the most popular, well-promoted solution against spoofing is DNSSEC. It's, it's picking up now on the authoritative side. Um, Holland has the, the, the .NL zone has the largest number of uh, DNSSEC signed zones, zones in absolute terms. Uh, we have been surpassed in relative terms. I think the Czech Republic has like 60, 70 percent signed now, while we are, are only at 50. Of course, uh, does anybody know why? This number is so big. Money. Money. .nl registry pays money if you sign your DNSSEC, if you DNSSEC sign your names. Um, so this is, the, this is the, the good stuff about DNSSEC, but there's also this site. This is a deliberately bogus example, um, but DNSSEC breaks a lot. It's getting better. Uh, ISPs like BIT are, are monitoring these things, telling the authoritative operators, listen, your domain is broken please fix it. Um, but right now, if you enable DNSSEC as an access ISP, you will get more phone calls and nobody wants more phone calls. Um, so validation is picking up very slowly and the business case for it is hard. Um, but I hope we will see more of it over time. That was all I had. Please ask questions because we have time. Thank you so much, Peter. We have a question. <coughs> Peter, thanks. So, suppose you use properly randomized query IDs and properly randomized ports. How much of a problem is spoofing then now uh, without all those extra measures of adding more entropy? Um, the, the RFC 5452 document uh, has the, the numbers and, and the formulas to calculate those. Um, but adds a total of basically, we're saying 30 bits of entropy. So you need 2 to the, tw two to the 29th uh, attempts. And uh, th that's just a lot of traffic. So either if you're in a hurry, you will need to send gigabits of traffic <coughs> to the recursor you're trying to spoof. Or, and this is the interesting thing that might still be happening and we don't know, you could spread it out over months and just keep playing that lottery one a second. And eventually you will get lucky, insert your spoofed entry with a, with a, a week long TTL, and you'll be in business. This might ha be happening today, we don't know. So <coughs> it, it's a bit theoretical in that term, but uh, the DNS of, DNS of cookies draft specifically 
also targets uh, DDoS avoidance, which I think is actually a more interesting goal for it. Thanks. <coughs> Thanks. Um, sorry, going back to the slide towards the beginning with the EDNS subnet um, information being sent to the authoritative server. Uh, that's <laughs> this one. That's it. How does it know when it's finally got to the authoritative server and this is the correct one to actually send the EDNS subnet? Right, right. Uh, it, it doesn't. It, 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 ah. um, the, the recursor knows which authoritatives support EDNS client subnet. Uh, for example, uh, the Google public DNS so server, mm -hmm. um, until like a year ago, you had to send them email and tell them, please send my authoritatives the EDNS client subnet data. Um, this became too much work for them. So right now they probe periodically to see if your authoritative supports the draft, supports the extra option in the packet. Okay. And it just keeps on to that data. Okay, you be question. Thanks. Now's your chance. There we go. Um, a few slides later, you were talking about the um, um, QNAM minimization. Yes, this but one. How much will this help? Because, I mean, Google.com and even .com will be in your caches. So, how many queries right. will this save? Right. Um, that's a very good, good point. Indeed, if you first go to Google.com, and then to Pornhub.com, the .com servers only know you've been to Google. Um, but people are running recursors at home more and more for, because of DNSSEC, for example. And in that case, they will still be sending questions to the .com servers for a lower number of users, which, which means there's few, fewer stuff in cache. But it, it's a valid point. The, the impact is quite low on a big resolver farm, yes. Maybe there are benefits in terms of bandwidth? <laughs> yes, yes, we are saving, shaving 12 bytes of a 60 byte packet. <laughs> <laughs> no more questions for Peter? One more. Again, an invitation for RIPE. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vesna, community builder from RIPE NCC. I want to invite you to... <laughs> use our data, <coughs> excuse me. So we run a Kroot name server uh -huh. and we also run RIPE Atlas, the measurement network, and we have a lot of data about DNS and uh, which one of these new protocols that people are testing and implementing, how many of these queries, for example, to the root name server are like this or like that. So if you need some research data, please come to us, we have data. Thank you. That's a wrap, Peter. Thank you so much. No problem.